Hello there guys and welcome. Welcome to my first ever contact with the brand new, well, not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Uh, Volkswagen Golf 8. Now it's been almost two years since this car has been launched and yet this is the first time I had the pleasure of reviewing it. And the reason for that, according to the PR representatives I talked with, is that they simply didn't have stock enough to give me one of these cars because they would sell, the demand for them would be so high and they would sell so fast that they just couldn't get me one. So I'm so glad that I finally got to drive the new Golf 8. And today we are going to dissect this version, which is the GTE. So considering the naming of this model, what could you immediately say about it? Well, you could say that it's meant to be a sportier version of the normal uh, Golfs, and that would be accurate. You could also say that the E in the GTE nameplate stands for electric, and that is also correct. So you could assume that this is meant to be the best of both worlds. This is supposed to be a hybrid electric car with some sporty pedigree in it. And that would be exactly what the GTE is supposed to mean. Now, talking about the Golf in general, this is a legendary car. This car, ever since it was launched back in the 1970s, has been a massive success, a massive sales success. As a matter of fact, Volkswagen sold over 35 million of these cars until the eighth generation came out. And every single production year, this car has been one of the best selling models in Europe every single time. So if you look at the sales chart for 2021, you will notice that this car has been on the number one spot with over 205,000 of them being sold. The runner up, the Peugeot 208 is not only considerably cheaper, but also considerably smaller. So that says a lot about the Golf. So the reason why the Golf is so appreciated, well, it's, it's all hidden in, um, and the way it's built and what it offers. Customers know exactly what to expect from a Golf. They expect a good car, a reliable car, a decently spacious car with decent finishes on board and decent mileage uh, when it comes to fuel consumption. So that's what the Golf has offered over the last over 40 years. And we're gonna find out today if the new Golf still adheres to those rules. Now, in terms of design, just as they got us used to, the engineers and the designers of the new Golf decided to keep things conservative. Now, this car is also built on the MQB platform, the MQB Evo. So basically it's a Golf 7 with some added on tech. Uh, and in terms of design, you, you will also notice the resemblance to the Golf 7. We have different headlamps, a slightly different uh, front bumper and rear bumper and slightly different taillights, but overall the proportions of the car are exactly the same. Now, since this is a GTE model, we have a couple of interesting um, details on it. For example, the blue highlights in the headlamps, the blue highlights in the uh, grille connecting the headlamps and the GTE badge up front. We also have a GTE badge on the tailgate and we have a meaner looking front bumper. Other than that, you could also tell that this is a plug-in hybrid by the extra cap over here which hides the charger for the battery. Now the GTE comes with 17 inch or 18 inch wheels. We have the 18 inch wheels over here and I love the fact that we have red brake calipers right behind them. It gives the car a bit more pizzazz if you will. The reason why you cannot get bigger wheels I think hides in the fact that this car is considerably heavier than most of its brothers. So they didn't, the engineers didn't want to ruin the ride on this car. But I'm guessing that if you really want to, you can fit bigger wheels on this car, but you just cannot buy them when you, you're configuring it. The doors open pretty wide and they offer easy access to the inside, which is where we will hop in a few seconds to see how the car uh, feels like and what it offers inside the cabin. But before we do, I have to mention the, the, um, the boot. Over there you'll find about 100 liters less of space because of the hybrid battery taking up some of the room. So in total you get 273 liters, which is not a lot, 
but it should be enough for a um, modest family going on a road trip for for example now let's hop in and see what the new golf brings in terms of technology and fit and finish inside the new golf uh, gte well things are just as you probably expect um, things are very conservatory very uh, well thought out and well built but there's nothing surprising in here nothing exciting with one huge exception the seats these are some of the best seats i've ever sat in um, they just fit my frame perfectly they offer a lot of side bolstering and they are incredibly comfortable and the fact that they are dressed up in this plaid pattern uh, textile finish doesn't bother me at all they look great and the materials feel really nice to the touch so i would buy these seats if i could for my own personal car but i cannot so i totally recommend them they are incredibly comfortable and they offer a lot of uh, um, support whenever you want to drive in a sportier manner other than that everything is very um, classic inside this car everything looks as you would expect it to and i have a couple of com complaints let's get them out of the way the fact that we have a lot of black glossy surfaces around here really doesn't help out because uh, you will probably be driven to insanity by the amount of fingerprints and dust they could gather and they are around the screens and over here on the center console uh, i also don't like this tiny little gear shift lever but i'm okay with it because it can always get even worse because some cars today simply have buttons for changing the direction you drive in so that's okay and that's about it of course we have scratchy plastics on the bottom half of the car but that's to be expected in this um, segment it's a volume segment it's not a premium segment so that's not really annoying me at all but other than these bottom half scratchy plastics we have uh, soft touch plastic on the dashboard on the door cards um, you have alcantara on the doors um, so the material mix is pretty good and everything is put together really nicely well the fit and finish is impeccable so um, you won't hear any weird noises at all the infotainment system well it has gesture control uh, and it's rather easy to use um, but it has evolved from the first models that came out so Volkswagen had two years to fix a lot of the bugs the cars had when it initially came out you have android auto and apple carplay uh, embedded with without a wire so they work really well um, but i don't like the fact that i have to adjust the volume and the temperature using the, these touch sensitive um, surfaces over here as you probably see right now i made a mistake and i barely touched a certain area over here and things got out of hand so yeah i'm not a really big fan of this we have a shortcut menu over here that allows you to skip browsing through um, the menu of the infotainment system and you can go into various functions over here the climate control and driving assist functions uh, and we have a digital instrument cluster with different ways of uh, showing you the information but there is one that is uh, available only for the GTE model. Uh, it has the GTE badge on it, um, displayed quite large, so you know in what kind of car you are. And if you, in case you forget, you also have the GTE badge on the steering wheel, along with some blue accents, as we saw outside on the nose of the car. So yeah, overall, it is exactly what you would expect from a Golf. Now let's hop in the back and see what kind of room we have in this car. Sitting in the back of the Golf, you realize that this is the uh, most important test you have to carry out because there isn't a lot of room over here in the back. So the driver's seat has been adjusted to my comfortable driving position. I'm six feet tall and about 250 pounds. And with the driver's seat adjusted in my comfortable driving position, there isn't a lot of room left over here in the back. My knees are definitely pushing against the backrest. And my head, well, I do have enough headroom, but there's definitely not enough uh, knee room or leg room. Uh, so yeah, take what you will from this test. Uh, maybe if you have someone with shorter legs up front, you won't have so many problems with sitting a taller person in the back. But I'm certain that you wouldn't want to fit three adults over here. We have a huge um, transmission tunnel over here. So 
there isn't going to be a lot of room. Another things I, thing I could uh, criticize about the uh, rear side of the GTE, the Golf 8, is the fact that we don't have the same quality plastics on the door cards, which is very interesting. They probably wanted to save some money and we have scratchier plastics over here on the top part of the door card. Now let's hop behind the wheel of this car and talk about its technical platform and the way it drives. Now that we hopped behind the wheel of the new Volkswagen Golf 8 in its GTA shape, uh, we should talk about the technical platform it is built on and the specs. So as usual, the Golf is offered in a number of versions and that is a good thing. That's something Volkswagen got us used to and it seems like the recipe hasn't changed. Having a number of engines to choose from is something that uh, Volkswagen um, got us used to, at least when it comes to the Golf. So the range kicks off with one liter petrol engines, which can be had with 90, 110 horsepower and the likes. Then you have the 1.5 liter engine, which is the best in the range, if you ask me which can be had with 130 or 150 horsepower. Then you have two liter petrol engines uh, with various amounts of power up to 333 horsepower on the R special edition model. And uh, you can also have diesel uh, uh, engines uh, with various amounts of power, including a GTD version that has a two liter 200 horsepower TDI power plant under the hood. Then you have the plug-in hybrids, which um, include this model as well. So you have a um, e-hybrid version and uh, the GTE version. And uh, they basically use the same 1.4 liter turbocharged petrol mill under the hood, hooked up to a transmission that also includes a, uh, an electric motor um, and a battery in the back. So the GTE is the more powerful version of these two hybrids, uh, plug-in hybrids. Um, and the internal combustion engine makes 150 horsepower and the electric motor attached to it makes 110 horsepower. And combined, they can only deliver up to 245 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque, which are very good numbers overall. Now, the battery st um, stored in the back of the car has a total capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours, uh, but you can only use 10.2 kilowatt hours of that energy because, as you know, all batteries for these sort of systems have a buffer on them. So that's the buffer on this model. And according to Volkswagen, this should allow you to cover up to 60 uh, kilometers with a full charge, but my real life range test showed that um, I was only able to cover about 35 kilometers. So you might want to keep that in mind if you're looking at the amount of um, kilometers you can cover with a full charge. And that is important when it comes to uh, plug-in hybrids because they should only be bought and used um, with a full battery because otherwise they don't really make sense. But we're going to talk about that later on. So the car is built on the MQB, uh, MQB EVO platform, which is shared with a number of other models from the Skoda Octavia to the um, Volkswagen Passat and so on. There's a number of cars using this platform. It's very familiar. In terms of suspension setup, you have a McPherson setup up front, pretty standard. And in the back, depending on the amount of power you have, you have different setups. So if your car has up to 150 horsepower, you will get a, um, a setup with a torsion bar. But if you have over 150 horsepower, you will get... Um, and that should make a whole lot of difference. This car has the independent suspension uh, on the rear axle, but due to the extra 170 kilos, for the hybrid setup, um, it does feel a bit more rigid than it you would expect. Furthermore, since this is a GTE model, that GT in its name implies a stiffer suspension and a sportier setup overall. Now, on the GTI or the R models or the GTD models, um, you'd get a lowered suspension as standard and stiffer bushings and everything 
uh, um, of that sort. But on this car, you get stiffer bushings, a different setup for the dampers, but you don't get a lower suspension. So that was done according to Volkswagen in order to protect the batteries. Mm. I don't think that's the case. I think they did it because they know the car is heavier with the setup. And if you add four adults inside the cabin, um, things can get really messy in terms of the suspension setup. So um, already over certain bumps, you can feel the car jiggling around because of that extra weight. So if you uh, also lowered the suspension by, I don't know, 50 millimeters, you would get um, a big impact on the way the car feels overall. So that's probably why they didn't lower the suspension. Now, a big part of buying, a big reason why people are buying plug-in hybrids is to cut on their um, fuel costs. So as I said, the real life range I got with this car was around 35 kilometers, let's say 40 because it was pretty crowded. It was rather, uh, we had to deal with rather heavy traffic. Um, but once I depleted the battery, the first 100 kilometers covered showed a, an average energy consumption or fuel consumption of 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers covered, which is not that bad for a car with 245 horsepower and uh, 400 Newton meters of torque. And outside the city limits, I saw an average energy consumption or fuel consumption of about five liters per 100 kilometers covered on a series of B roads and on the highway that uh, fuel consumption went up to seven liters per 100 kilometers covered. So. Decent numbers, I would say. Um, of course, the car is less efficient outside the city limits uh, because it doesn't really use the electric motor anyway. Uh, but I think overall it's quite enough. And the car is snippy. Uh, I mean, the throttle response is instantaneous because you have instant torque from that electric motor. Uh, but the gearbox does have some lag in it. So you press on the gas pedal and it takes a while until it downshift to keep you in the optimal torque range. Um, it's not a huge issue, but it's not really living up to the expectations of a car with the GT badge on it, the GTE badge in this case. Um, but the car does feel nice through the corners. It is composed, doesn't understeer a lot. Um, and the GTE model does come with a limited slip differential up front. It's an electronically controlled limited slip differential that does help in certain moments, uh, but you will still, um, if you do press on the gas pedal rather hard while exiting the apex, it will push the car towards the outside of the corner. So you will understeer a bit, but overall it does a good job. What I don't like is the fact that the front axle will lose grip rather easily when you press hard on the gas pedal uh, because of that instant torque, the front uh, axle will be overwhelmed at times by the torque. So you might want to get a set of very grippy tires to keep that under control, but that will also lead to an increase in the um, fuel consumption. So mm, it's up to you to decide what matters most, to be efficient or to be precise, or maybe, I don't know, um, keep the power down really well, put the power down really well. Um, so overall, since I got the car, I covered, let's take a look at the numbers, I covered 376 kilometers over a series of various roads. Uh, most of the time I spent inside the city and the average fuel consumption is 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers covered. But mind you, I only charged this car once. So if I did it at least twice, I think um, now the numbers would have been even better. Now, what I should also point out is the fact that um, charging the car will take between three and five hours. It depends on the kind of plug you're going to use. If you're using a regular home wall socket, it's gonna take about four and a half, five hours. Uh, if you're using a 3.6 kilowatt charger, you will need about three hours to recharge it. So that's not bad and you could easily do it at home at or at the office and maybe drive around town in completely electric mode um, all day. Furthermore, once the battery is depleted, the car does behave like a normal hybrid. And that means you will set off in electric mode. So the, uh, the car will use, use the electric motor to set off in order to save some fuel. 
You will also use the electric motor when pulling to a um, stop sign or a red light because the car will shut off its internal combustion engine and use the electric motor to recuperate energy and feed it back into the battery. And all of these tricks will improve your fuel consumption. So it's not going to be extra thirsty when the battery runs out, but that's not the way you're supposed to drive it anyway. Um, so overall, I think it is a very well done package. I think it's quite efficient overall for a car with this kind of power that can do 100 kilometers an hour from standstill in 6.7 seconds. It's not that bad actually. And I think you will get plenty of company tax um, uh, write-offs and all, all those nice little juicy things that make a plug-in hybrid very attractive right now in a number of countries. Um, free, free parking or free access around city centers in certain parts of the world and the likes. So overall, I did enjoy my time with the car, um, but if I would buy one or not depends on my situation. Right now, I wouldn't be able to charge it at home or at the office, so it wouldn't really make sense for me. Um, so I'd probably go for a regular Golf, like a GTI, for example, which has the exact same power, uh, but it's not a hybrid. But I am interested in finding out what you guys think of it. Um, if you would buy the GTE or if you would buy any other model, the GTI or the R version or the GTD, maybe why not? Even though diesel is in a bit of in a bit of trouble right now. So I would like to know your opinion on it. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and you have if you have any more additional questions about the car. Don't be afraid to drop a comment. I am more than glad to answer any of your questions. Until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to feed your passions. Ciao.